Well, welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast Lure Co. We're out here fishing out of South Padre Island, Texas, hauling tail up to a royal city. And we ended up fishing in Port Mansfield, Texas that day. Uh, right now, we are competing in the Darza Owners Tournament. Now, if you've been watching our videos, you know that last year we won with the heaviest redfish. So, uh, stay tuned. Uh, thank you all for watching. Make sure for all you new folks, you can f click the follow button and you can buy any of our lures that you see using today on our website at ctclures.com. So on uh, our fishing trip, as you can tell, the wind is blowing. I don't know why or it's actually come to expect it down here in South Texas. Uh, because the wind's blowing, the water's turned up, it's murky. We're trying to fish places that we normally catch fish at. Um, but because the water's murky, it's darker than what we're usually used to, uh, we're going to go ahead and do some things a little bit differently, but also the same, I guess. Uh, fishing with a white lure, one of our pro staffers, Captain uh, Stephen Hillary, I'll go ahead and put him in the notes, uh, suggested that we come up with an all white lure, similar to our Ty's Ice, which is white without the chartreuse tail. Uh, apparently it worked, for, it's been working for him pretty well. One of the things that I've noticed, especially on this day, that I've never really put attention to uh, is the difference between the popping cork and the 212 rig. They do the same thing. The only thing that I noticed is that popping cork really, really takes a toll on you throughout the day, especially if you're fishing non-stop, if you're like myself or in the tournament. Compared to that 212 rig from PS Tackle that I always promote and talk about in my other videos, it's a lot lighter, it's a lot easier on you, especially your shoulders. It's a lot easier on your rod so if you're going to be fishing with a popping cork you might need a heavier duty rod uh, strictly for the popping cork with the 212 rig you might be able to get away with your regular light tackle combo that we would normally use in the uh, bay I guess maybe I'm just getting older but I do feel the difference so the whole purpose of this 212 or the popping cork is to make noise and the 212 rig uh the ps tackle actually has a lineup of the 212 rig that comes in a specific popper now the purpose of this is to make some noise now you see the water clarity is poor nobody really can see anything so that bright white lure or a dark lure you'll see me use later on called the louis louis um, the popper popping cork the 212 ray, what it does, it makes a noise similar to what the sound that the predatory fish out here make when they're attacking something. So that draws in other fish to come see what's going on. Uh, and once they get close enough, they'll go ahead and strike our lure on the way down majority of the time. Also, a quick note, if you saw our measuring board just a little bit ago, Big thing to remember on a tournament is try to use the same measuring board that the folks are going to be using at the weigh-in. So I know for salt water, for the most part, uh, the check-it stick is very popular. Uh, one, we were having problems with that rinky-dink kayak uh, measuring stick. Yeah, it works for the size of this boat, but for the tournament, it really, really hurt us at the end. And the reason why I say that is... Uh, if you don't have the same type of measuring board, you could end up with a fish that might be over what you need to have or might be too small. In our case, we had a fish that measured right at 19 inches later in the day. And once we got to the weigh-in station, it was not even close to what that measuring board had learned. 
So, here we go, off into the uh, sunset, basically. Uh, we were forced to go ahead and hunt our fish now. So, down here, one of the things that we can do, since we fish a lot of shallow water, is we have towers on some of our boats. Uh, of course, you need to have somebody else drive the boat from the bottom, or you can have your steering up on top. And what we're doing is looking for fish, and you'll hear me out there yelling one, two, and what I'm doing is letting the guy down there on the bottom, Mr. Omar of Calvin's uh, Automotive Inspection Services, uh, know that what I see and see if it's worth even stopping for for the fish that are out there. Always want to do. Get the net, boys. Get the net. They're here, bro. I don't know how that happened, bro. And he had spots on him, too. He had a couple of them. Ah, I just lost the skipjack. Got on that tamarindo, bro. We're back in business, boys. Saw it swim away. Man, I lost two good fish in here already. for me please sir well, at least we haven't been skunk bro Mondao. What the hell? 
prime example of why everybody's always afraid of bait casters for the guys that use nothing but spinning reels. Uh, it's just something that's always going to happen. The bird's nest. Do your best and your due diligence, and it's still going to happen to you every now and then. One of the things that I always suggest is don't go crazy uh, and don't start doing things. It's not very often where you'll get a catastrophic bird's nest, but they will happen from time to time. And while I'm trying to undo this thing, you'll see my buddy in the bottom uh, right hand corner there. Mr. Omar Galvan hook up to fish at what we thought would have been a contender to win for the uh, slotted uh, speckled trout, but it did not. But uh, a quick tip real quick about these baitcasters. Watch some YouTube videos. Uh, try to learn with monofilament line before you use braid because braid is pretty expensive. Uh, you can get a little weight or whatever size jig head or plastics you're going to be using out there and get out there in your yard and cast bro and cast and cast and cast if you have a catastrophic bird nest the mono just cut it clear it put some more mono on it and don't give up uh, on fishing trips though i do sort of advise uh to make sure you carry a spinning reel with you uh if you're uh, going to go fishing and uh, another quick tip also about bait casters, don't try to throw them against the wind unless you're a trained professional because then you will have a catastrophic failure. Five cast in and we'll head back in. We have something worth it now. Yeah. And that's pretty much the end of the day. Uh, OJ caught a nice red. We caught those trout. Today was definitely an off day for us. Maybe it was the boat traffic. Maybe it was the heat. Maybe it was the amount of wind that was going out there. Uh, for instance, this area that we're fishing in is somewhere we really don't fish that often. One, because it's usually too shallow to fish in. Uh, it's just that today the tide was a little bit higher than what it is normally. We're fishing in about two feet of water uh, and as you can tell if you're one of our regular viewers or watchers or subscribers our videos are pretty long because they're full of fish uh this is probably one of our shorter videos that we've done on a fishing trip 
Uh, once again, thank you, everybody. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe. Stay tuned. We have some epic kayak video coming up next. And I think the next video after that, we're going to go flounder gigging, me and my daughters. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors, uh, Galvan's Automotive and Inspection Services, Hookliner Sinker of Hardingen, uh, Gordon's Bait and Tackle of Brownsville, Click Twins of Far, uh, also PS Tackle. Uh, they make astounding deals like I talked to you about earlier about the 212 rig look into it especially if you're a light tackle type guy it's very useful you can get, definitely use that in uh, salt water fresh water and uh, you'd be amazed if you uh, tie one on thanks for watching mm -hmm.